All right, guys. So we were discussing about uh, big data. And whenever we talk about big data, remember it is just a word, right? English simple dictionary meaning is what we need to look at. Data which is too big. It's nothing fancy about it. This is what we were trying to understand before the long break that we have taken. Or rather, I have taken, right? So, so to explain this big data, we basically use four Vs, volume, velocity, variety, and veracity. Volume is basically talking about the size, velocity, the speed, variety, the structure of the data, and veracity is the truthfulness of the data. These basically form the crux of the definition of big data. And whenever we talk about big data with these characteristics, then we need to immediately think about the challenges. And we have seen how the industry itself has transitioned right, from manual ways of doing business to digitization, digital transformation. And as part of that, we have seen how database Software has come into the picture, why they have come into the picture. Then we have also seen the requirement or the need for big data. And the primary challenge or primary challenges that we need to look at with respect to big data are these two, storage and processing. And of course, if I have to use an infrastructure which can handle this particular uh, big amount of data, then we need to look at the cost. Scalability is also another primary factor that we need to look at because the data is going to grow. It does not going to, it's not going to stop, right? It's day on day, it is going to increase. In fact, it is said that every day, the amount of data that is getting generated is almost getting doubled. That means we sleep today, we, we work today, we generated some amount of data, we sleep and next day morning, if you observe, we will be working on double the amount of data. But we are generating double the amount of data that we have generated today. That's the generic uh, right saying. So your infrastructure that is basically being used to uh, right, handle this big data has to also have this feature of scalability. It should be able to grow. Then in order to handle this complex data, we have uh, challenges with respect to the unstructured data because the traditional tools and techniques do not allow us to handle unstructured data. They're not designed to do that. Right? So the limitations with respect to the existing tools is what we need to understand here. Now to come up with a solution for these challenges, people have, or the organizations have come up with distributed framework concept. Distributed framework basically originated from a concept called as horizontal scaling. That means rather than using a single system, we'll use multiple interconnected systems, right? And for the end user, we will try to project that this is a single supercomputer, but internally there will be multiple computers. Right? This is how your horizontal scaling works. Internally, all these computers are interconnected. They are interconnected. So the capability of individual systems is combined. The power of this one single system comes from multiple subsystems and multiple computers that we are interconnected, right? And for the user, it is like a supercomputer. But how do we handle right, the, the storage and processing? 
So it all started by Google when they started working with their servers, multiple servers that they have, and they wanted to basically retrieve the data. So they figured out a solution, and that solution is called as map reduce solution. Right? So they map the required data from all the servers, and then they extract all the data. And on that extracted relevant data, we do uh, they do the processing. Right? We do the processing. So this basically ensures that we are not dealing with the full set of data, not required. Right? There might be millions of records, right? And hundreds of columns. Now we are not interested in all of them. We will only extract or we'll only map to the relevant data and choose what is relevant, what is required. And we work only on that data. This way we are making sure we are restricting our processing on limited amount of data. This is what Google came up with. Now that idea was enhanced by two people, Doug Cutting and Mike Caffarella, right? And they called that software basically as Hadoop. They named it as Hadoop. That's because of uh, the toy which Doug Cutting's son had. That's the history, basically. A small toy, a low elephant toy was there, which is, uh, I mean, which he was very fond of. So they, they named it uh, as Hadoop itself, the software. There's no different logic behind the scenes. It's just a random sentimental thing that came up, and they named it as Hadoop. Now, this Hadoop basically is a combination of MapReduce. This is the concept which Google came up with, which is basically right result of Google research, and it is distributed computing framework. It's a computing engine which computes the data which is right lying on different servers. And uh, the challenge with uh, MapReduce is that it is a low-level programming languages and. We basically have two parts, map jobs and reduce jobs. We'll discuss this again in detail. And there's a concept called as input splits also. This is about map reduce concept. One of the component of your distributed computing framework or distributed framework. Then we also have storage component. So Doug Cutting and Mike Afrela introduced HDFS along with the map reduce component, which was already there. HDFS means Hadoop Distributed File System, right? And we discussed about operating systems, uh, right? Windows operating system, if I talk about. Windows will have a file system called as NTFS, New Technology File System. Linux had an extension 3, extension 4, and now XFS file system. Right, and Mac has APFS, Apple File System. AFS or APFS, right, Apple File System. Similarly, if I treat Hadoop as a framework, when I say framework, it is a operating system for your cluster. This is a single supercomputer that this user is seeing, right? User is seeing this as a single computer. Right, for this single computer, there should be some operating system. That operating system is your Hadoop. So for Hadoop also, we have a file system, which is HDF. This is how we need to see the operating or this Hadoop software here, like an operating system. Operating system of your cluster. So we discussed about uh, these things. Now we'll deep dive onto these concepts. Let's move there.
horizontal scaling. We discussed about how the sectors are divided into uh, in your NTFS file system. And in extension three, we don't have this. Extension three basically is Linux operating system, which basically is the foundation or the main operating system or underly underlying operating system for your Hadoop, which basically means we need to have Linux operating system as a default operating system for Hadoop softwares because NTFS is not further distributed. It does not allow distribution. NTFS uh, right, is, is Windows technology, which already has those sectors. So Linux is what we need to use because extension three allows that. And whenever we talk about this distributor framework, the file is getting stored by using these two technology, these, these two concepts. One is partitioning. So your big data gets partitioned and uh, broken down into small pieces of data. And those small pieces of data gets stored in different independent systems in the cluster. And to make sure that we do not lose the data, we use replication. Replication is duplication. So these are the two concepts that we use in Hadoop for making sure fault tolerant is maintained or reliability is maintained. Those are the features of right your Hadoop. So Hadoop allows, these are the features of Hadoop. We have discussed about the history here, right? And these are the three major components that Hadoop has, HDFS, MapReduce, and YAN. And these are the features. So it allows us to manage big data by splitting it in distributed environment. It will also allow us to do processing that too in parallel, because you'll, you'll be working with multiple nodes, right? These are multiple servers or computers that we are interconnected. So each individual computer can independently work. So you can do parallel processing, distributed and parallel processing, right? So that's the advantage. And the software that we're talking about, Hadoop software is free and it is open source. And uh, the beauty of Hadoop is you don't need expensive hardware. You can take your regular hardware and then interconnect all those regular hardwares together. And then this becomes a supercomputer, right? So you don't need specialized hardware. Commodity hardware means your regular hardware can be used. It's scalable. You just keep adding more and more servers if we need. It is reliable because we have replication if in case data is lost, server is lost. And internally it takes care of faulty machines as well, fault tolerance. It's tolerant to failures. And uh, Hadoop has this feature, write once, read many. That means whenever we are recording some data into Hadoop, you will be able to write only once. Right, you load a data, some table as you. So you're storing some table, then you're going to store it only once. So it's a single file, it's getting split as you into three different uh, smaller data sets. So it's, it's getting recorded into these three servers. Now, if you want to change anything, you will not be able to do it. It is not editable, right? But you can read, a number of times, there is no restriction on that. Parallelly, 100 people can access the same data. Because you're not allowed to write, there is no exclusive lock that is required. And because it is only for read, data consistency will be there, right? So we use these services or Hadoop service basically for reporting or doing analytics, right? And uh, yeah, that's one of the major advantage that, that it provides for people in data science community, right? And of course, when you talk about data, data archival is, is very much required. 
right? Because you you don't want to lose any of the historical data, right? So archiving becomes very easy and secure in Hadoop. Multiple such advantages are there with Hadoop software. And as I discussed, replication and partitioning. This is the primary feature of your Hadoop. This is how it is going to handle failures in the network or failures in the cluster. If one of the system is crashed out, The data is not lost because data is backed up in two different servers. By default, right, the replication is maintained as three copies. That's the default number. We can change that, right? So this is how it is handling the fault tolerance. But the challenge is with who is going to manage everything, right? Who is going to coordinate with these different services or nodes? Right? Who is going to schedule the tasks? That's the primary challenge, and that is taken care by Hadoop itself. And uh, this is one image that we have seen Yahoo Racks. And uh, this is another image that we have seen for Google Place uh, data center. And at a high level, we discussed about the components. HDFS is the file system, MapReduce is the computing framework and yarn is the cluster manager it's a resource manager it's known as yet another resource manager and this basically allows third party softwares to communicate with hadoop operating system and when i say third party on hadoop we have a lot of softwares that got developed the most two popularly used data processing tools are pig and hive pig is a procedural language it's data flow language it's sql like commands would be there but it is used by non programmers if you're not a developer then developing mapreduce codes becomes easy uh, very very tough right it's a low level language that we need to write so you have to become a developer, coder, if you want to do that, right? But remember, we are data scientists. We're not core developers. So for people like us who come from programming, uh, sorry, who come from non-programming background, who come from functional side of things, right? Business side of things. For people like us, this pig will be really handy. Right, it's high level procedural programming language. Hive is invented by Facebook, Pig is invented by Yahoo, and Hive is nothing but SQL on Hadoop. SQL being one of the oldest data manipulation or data processing uh, language or interface. So Facebook has started or invented a logic on how to deal with the same SQL queries on Hadoop. And they call it as Hive, right? Then we have HBase, this is the database, right? Just like how we have SQL databases, RDBMS systems. Similarly, HBase is the first database to work on distributed framework. And this is no SQL. That means you can also handle unstructured data. Then Scoop is a tool which is popularly used for migrating the data, moving the data, importing, exporting the data from RDBMS software. This is your traditional uh, databases to your big data. That is your Hadoop instances. Scoop basically means SQL plus Hadoop. SQOOP. That's scoop for us. Right? And uh, then we also have third party 
software which is apache spark right and apache spark is again, again a framework which allows us to do super fast coding super fast analysis or processing and the, all this speed is achieved because spark uses memory right so that's um, the overview of the different topics that we are going to cover different projects that we are going to cover let us start discussing about hdfs right uh, yes uh, ashner we are going to yeah we will we will cover that right first we will look into hdfs hdfs is hadoop distributed file system right distributed file system that means whenever we want to work with any data the data is getting distributed right and that's the concept of the storage of your hadoop file system it splits hdfs allows us to split the large files into individual partitions which are excuse me which are called as blocks <coughs> excuse me <coughs> so these large files are broken into smaller partitions and each partition is called as a block and these blocks are basically replicated and stored in different nodes or computers in your cluster right and uh, each computer is working on its block parallelly so this is one way why how you can achieve parallel processing now though we are calling it as a hadoop software as operating system of cluster if this is my cluster this is like your single computer right this is the user you are seeing a single computer but internally we have these clusters uh, sorry servers interconnected right now each is an independent computer right so each computer should have its own operating system and this operating system is preferred to be linux right it was developed and tested and practiced on linux though we also have windows version for hadoop but it is developed on linux only and remember i talked about extension 3 file system which was used initially to get hadoop software developed right and uh, though at this level for this computer we are saying there is a storage what is that storage that storage is nothing but combination of all these computers so if i basically say the system has storage space this is a computer and this is the disk the user is looking at the disk but what is this this it is the combination of the data or, or the storage capacity of each of these individual computers right let's say each has 1 tb storage space each server that we are interconnecting here has 1 tb space storage space so how much is this 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 and 6 12 terabyte storage is what the user is going to see user end right so 12 tb is what this user is seeing but we know underneath it is actually physical disks which are independently working on these independent computers right when i say independent computers each computer should have the respective operating system so that there will be that interaction between the servers 
and that is done using linux guys very very important remember this and because it is operating system internally that operating system will have its own file system right independent operating system and file system and hdfs which is the file system for here right works on top of your underlying file system only see for example okay imagine that this is a 3d view okay 3d view okay let me say this is the disk this is the disk this is the disk this is the disk right so on so forth these disks is nothing but storage capacity for individual computers like this right so imagine that there is a virtual layer here a layer that we are creating this layer is hdfs so user when is trying to interact with this system he interacts at this level this is the storage device right but underneath it is combination of all these independent individual physical disks right so hdfs is what the file system will look like for this particular user but underneath each of this is xfs linux file system the latest one is xfs but you can say extension 3 also okay so this is how it's a virtual layer guys this is a virtual storage capacity it physically does not exist it's a virtual thing now hdfs manages that partitioning and it manages replication as well yes ashner please go ahead yeah can can you uh, raise your hand there's something called as uh, raise hand can you do that yeah got it there you go uh hello sir sorry to interrupt i just want to ask this question because currently uh for example we have three servers these are running on san or nas and then how do we interconnect that with the uh, hdfs because i know the hdfs the pipeline for example we have two data nodes and a uh, two control nodes or management node and when we, and then we have one data node right usually that's that's only three uh, how do you interconnect those with the hadoop i wasn't able to follow that up okay so you are saying this is data node yes okay this is control node or management node cn or mn okay fine what is this the same because it's actually acting as active and sleep right Ah, okay, okay. That is not the concept that we are talking about here. Okay, we are ah. not going there. Um, we'll we'll go there, but it's not like uh, um, so complicated. Just look at the scenario like this. These are three individual computers. So let's take nodes. We'll we'll not classify them as control nodes and all that. We'll just say nodes. over the network will establish a connection simple normal establishing connection okay, where yeah. communication is two way mm -hmm. and we you install hadoop software on all the three ah okay we installed it on the three i thought we install on the one and then it will oh, pass no, no, it no. to the no okay no, we, we i have to cover that i mean that's that's there in the future uh, i mean next slides we'll see that okay thank you sir yeah sure all right So, oops, my bad. Yeah, let me address this. So we were talking about uh, this um, combination. So if you talk about replication and all that, right? HDFS takes care of that replication and partitioning also. We talk about partitioning as well, right? So HDFS component will take care of this partitioning and replication. and this is the most important strategy which make sure there is reliability data loss should not happen right so from from that perspective replication and of course partitioning and then replication came into the picture 
Now, HDFS, the component, HDFS component, is designed very intelligently to understand the entire interconnected network. Topology is nothing but the network, right? So HDFS will be aware of the connected computers and their capabilities, right? And from which rack they are connecting, what server configurations that they have, storage components there, right? The, uh, capacity it has, all those things are uh, basically something which the component will know, the software will know. And because it is aware of this information, HDFS manages these services appropriately using the uh, using something called as metadata. Okay, we'll talk about that metadata also. This is nothing but the information about your so it's, it's, uh, nodes. Using this information, HDFS is intelligently using the uh, capability that these these individual systems have. Right. So that's uh, something we need to understand. Now, coming to the point on how this replication and how is this partitioning actually happening? So this concept of partitioning, right, is coming from this logic. See this logic. I have one file. Assume it is 474 MB. Okay, imagine it is a big file. Okay, big data. Now my computers individually in my network, let's say they do not have capacity to store that single file itself. Okay, let's imagine that these computers do not have the capacity to store that data as is. So what happens is the data is getting split into fixed sized block we say fixed size it's not random size based on the server capacity but rather the other way around first you define the number of partitions based on the fixed size that you're going to upfront decide and that will tell us on how many partitions we got for one file and then it will plan on how these partitions can be stored in different servers. Because this way, management becomes easy. Now, if you say that, no, my server's capacity is so much, I can only store so much of data. So let me randomly partition this into different sizes so that my data can be fit into different servers. If you try and approach that method, then the management part becomes too difficult, right? So having standard fixed size blocks give the advantages. One is read option. When you want to read the data, remember writing is fine. We have write once read many, right? So accessing this data becomes very easy because the disk reader will know what is that block it has to access, right? It directly goes to that block and reads that entire data. So reading becomes much easier. The second advantage is performance. Hadoop, uh, once it decides on how many blocks you have, it can easily do the calculations Right and and uh, I mean sorry, it can easily understand which uh, servers have that enough space, and based on that space, it is going to allot those blocks into these servers. So if I have four hundred and seventy-four MB, I would divide this very easy calculations: four seventy-four divided by one twenty-eight. Simple. It gives me three point something, so I'll round it off to four. Upper integer. So Hadoop will immediately know that it requires four different nodes to store these four different blocks. 
and then it will also decide on replications based on those blocks it can easily calculate how many blocks can be fit on a node right so even from the storage perspective let's say this system has 500 mb left so that means 500 by 128 simple right it will understand that it can store only three blocks or 128 right so it, it can basically store only three full blocks so the remaining data is getting wasted that's okay it gets wasted remember because you have a standard block size it cannot be beyond this so if you see this 474 if you divide that by 128 you get three point something right so 128 mb block 128 mb block 128 mb block and the fourth block will be of size 128 mb only the size will be 128 mb only but the data that we are having is only 90 that means this space the remaining space that you see is wasted you will not be able to use this space for anything else right so that's uh, one of the drawback but this is advantages from perspective of management and uh, remember the default block size is 128 mb the ideal or or i should say not default the most practiced the block can be as low as 64 mb and it can vary to whatever size you might want to define you can also take 1 gb as one block it depends on what kind of data you are working with whether you are basically working with large data or small pieces of data based on that you are going to define your block size but 128 is used because 128 is not too small not too big hence it's it's preferred so the idea is if i use 64 mb this is the least that i can go if i use 64 mb block what is the problem here the problem is you need to divide this data with 64 that means you will get more number of blocks when i say more number of blocks in the cluster you need to manage those eight different servers right so you have to work with eight different servers too much of workload if you say 474 divided by let's say 512 mb then the problem is you are wasting too much of data for example your data is let's say 600 mb assume your file is 600 mb file right the 600 mb file if i use 512 mb as the block size then i need to create one point something this basically means two blocks the first block that you are going to split will be 512 mb right so the remaining data that you are seeing how much is that 88 so that means out of your 5 12 mb block you are using only 88 mb all this is wasted you cannot use it for anything else so you need to balance we need to balance right on do you want to have um let's say good performance or do you want to have basically let's say uh, more storage space conservation so that is basically something that we need to decide right uh, please hold on guys we'll be discussing all that
yes 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 we will we will that's what i'm saying right 64 mb is the default block size or the minimum block size that we can develop but the most widely practiced popular technique by or i should say default size is 128 mb but you can decide whatever the block size you want but the problem is once you defined the file block once you define what is the block size that block size will be consistent across your hadoop cluster you cannot say for one file you have 64 mb for another file you have 128 mb for another file i'll have 512 mb this does not work that's not designed it's the standard size and we are going to define it when you are configuring so you need to plan appropriately on what business conditions you are working with and based on that you are going to decide on what is your block size so this is about partitioning right it happens partitioning is done using standard sized blocks and uh, the default block size is 128 mb remember that so this is what happens just to pictureize imagine this uh, or visualize this this is a single file assume this file has to be split into three blocks 128 mb default and 128 mb assume i am having fixed 128 mb block size so i have three blocks first i will load my block into this server then i would make the same block copy into two other servers so in total i have three replicas or let me say block a this is a1 block a block a similarly for block b we will make three copies c also we do the same right so this is how the data is managed on hadoop cluster now by mistake if this server is gone you already have the data backed up so data is not lost because of this replication right partitioning is the first concept where we say 128 mb will be the block size or each split size and to make sure that none of these blocks are lost we replicate that we replicate the blocks and the default replication is 3 right replicated three times that means you take any block it will be repeated or it will have three copies in your cluster at any given point of time it has to have three copies this is called as replication factor replication factor so hadoop's hdfs works with partitioning and replication partitioning is based on blocks and these blocks can have any size which is in multiples of 64 and uh, the ideal block size is 128 mb because it is not too small not too big and the second concept of hdfs is replication where the file is replicated three times so for any block it will be there repeated three times in the cluster now how does this actually replication is done what is the logic behind the scenes right so there is an intelligent system guys it's not just like randomly copying like this this science behind it so let us try and understand that science 
how many of you are familiar with the data centers uh, concept okay <laughs> okay so let me explain there is a not me answer so let me explain what does this mean data center is nothing but a specific set of uh, or an place dedicated space where you will have servers computers for your businesses we need high configured machines it's not your regular laptops that we use in organizations when you are talking about uh, organizations data then specialized systems are used those are servers Th this concept is, uh, uh, is something that you are familiar right i'm assuming you are familiar with this right so servers are managed now in house servers management is difficult it's not easy to manage a server so people started or organization started hiring servers which are managed by somebody else right that's nothing but data centers so data centers are basically the location or or the space where specialized hardware is installed and maintained by specialized people specialized team network engineers database administrators right application developers these people will be there now in this data centers these specialized hardware that we are seeing right they will be arranged in something called as racks if you see here this is a rack it's like an almara right we we call it as almara right not sure what is it called in library if you go you can see rack of books right in one rack you will set up specific set of books right or specific author or specific subject It's managed same way here in data centers these servers are right fixed into racks now this helps the data centers to manage the power supply and network supply to bunch of servers that are used here right so 1200 racks are there for uh, yahoo and there are total number of 42000 servers right so multiple servers are put into one rack okay different servers di different racks have different uh, configurations and all that so don't worry about it rack is nothing but a box it's nothing but a box case it's not a fancy thing so we have a name given to it it is nothing but a box which which allows you to put servers here so let's say this is rack a rack b so i'll say a s1 a s2 a s3 a s4 a s5 so assume this rack has five servers similarly i am having five servers in rack b also okay right so these are the servers i have given the names remember i said managing the power supply and network supply would become easy for your uh, data center right data center people because otherwise you need to give individu individually power supplies and uh, power uh, network supply right internet supply and all that so rather than that these racks are used where fixed connections are there and you just put your server in this slot and you are going to have dedicated power supply and network supply given automatically for this particular box so it's just a management thing guys nothing fancy okay 
And for this rack, you will have power supply and network supply. Okay, like this. Now, what data centers promise you is zero downtime. They promise, they say that we will maintain the servers in such a way that you will not experience downtime. Servers don't crash is what they say. But obviously, these are hardware systems and they do crash. Right? That's the challenge. Okay. So, we are making these replications in Hadoop to maintain the availability of the data at any given point of time. 100% availability should be there. You cannot say that server is down, so data is not accessed. You cannot give that excuse. That, that's the primary requirement to have replication. Right? Now, this is a block that I'm copying. Okay, block one. So what Hadoop does is, it knows what all systems are, right, are there in that cluster. So this is a data center. Within the data center, you have multiple racks. These are the two racks which basically have the servers which are free. Okay, let's say this, this particular server has 500 MB free space. This has, let's say, 500 MB. This has 400 MB. So on and so forth, okay? This is 400, this is 400, this is, right, 400. These are 500 MBs. Okay? Now, when the first instance, when this rack is getting copied, Hadoop looks into the entire architecture or entire cluster, okay, to identify which of the nodes have maximum storage capacity or which of the node can be used to store this block. This is a block, right? And we have 128 MB block. So any system which has greater than 128 free storage space will be preferred. Right? And maximum storage and availability should be there. The server should be free. It should not be doing something else. So assume Hadoop identified this server as available, freely available in rack A. It has 500 MB free storage space. So it, it is copying the block into this. Now this block has to be replicated. Now when it is replicating again, it has to choose the server which has maximum availability. If you look into these servers, there's 500 MB available space, right? Each of the server has 500 MB available space. But this is not chosen. None of these servers are chosen because they come from the same rack. So once a server is chosen from rack for initially copying the block, Hadoop will not look into any of the servers in that rack for second copy. It will always go to another rack and then find which server is available in that another rack. Let's say this is 300 MB. So it identified that BS2 second server is free. It has 400 MB and it is free. Free to right uh, work on this storage requirement. That's also a task, right? So this replication happens here. Now, why it is not choosing this is the data availability or high availability. That's a question, right? We are doing this to make sure that data is available. So if you make the blocks copy like this. Forget about rack B because the network and all those things are here. So if I make copy like this, the, the servers go down very rarely in data centers, guys. Very, very rarely it goes down. But there is a possibility that it might go down. Uh -huh. And then there is very highly unlikely chance that the entire rack goes down. But still there is a possibility, remember that. 
because i am saying the network and the power right these source for rack is single source so this is for network this is for power okay single input would be there for the entire rack now what if there is a rodent coming in and biting this network pipe off or maybe this power cord off by mistake but still you might have a rodent problem which might do that as i said very very highly um, unlikely that it might happen but still there is a possibility if this happens then the entire rack becomes inaccessible or inaccessible if that is the case then your data is lost you will not be able to access the file right so then where is your reliability where is your fault tolerance right this is the reason why we always go for a server which is there on another rack even if this rack goes down then your data is not lost because your data is already backed up in a server which is there on another rack right so that's the beauty of this uh, entire logic you have to think from so many perspectives right so the hadoop is designed to make sure that there is no data loss right now you might ask us then hey why then why not third copy be there in another rack there might be rack c why not you make this third copy there we can there's no logic i mean it's, it's not mandatory that you have to put it here you can do that but you also have to look at the performance we are trying to make sure that availability is there but there is also something called as performance that we need to look at communicating between servers would be much faster right within a rack compared to communication between the servers between racks so it takes a little while right a little few milliseconds or microseconds additional time would be taken for doing the data transmission from a rack to a rack that, that means a rack from one server a server from one rack to another server in another rack right so just to make sure that performance does not fall down the third copy is maintained in the same rack but yeah as i mentioned you can have different servers also cooking up here so this is the science behind why it is copied this way clear everyone any questions <laughs> do we have questions anyone please oh no questions fine all right so let's move on all right so we talked about components hadoop has components what components hdfs map reduce and the hadoop 2.x has yarn also coming into the picture these are components guys but these components are supported or provided based on the services which are running in the background there are services hadoop is developed using java right and there will be background java processes which basically support the entire work that we are discussing right so these java processes or services also known as daemons right support these components 
And these five services or five demons, we call it as demons because they run in the background, right? If any one of these services is not running, any one of the demon is not running, that means your Hadoop has issues, okay? And we have five services, five demons, name node, data nodes, secondary name node, resource manager and node manager. Okay, five services. Now, whenever we talk about distributed framework, when I say distributed, this is a single computer, Right, that is the impression that we are trying to project. But internally, we'll have different servers, right? Now, when you have different players working together, there should be a proper communication and there should be a proper control, right? To make sure that the work is flown smoothly. But if you don't have that, then the problem is each work, each node works independently in its own way. It's like there is a team in an organization, there is a team, right? And team members are there. Now, what happens if there is no control among, I mean, for these team members? If there's no control, each one of it tries to boss the other. That's what happens, right? Nobody cares about the other. And they, they, the task becomes chaotic when, when we assign any task to this team. Isn't it? So what we need is a system or we need a controlling factor here. So we will say, this is manager. And all of you have to follow the orders given by this manager. So we will have one master and rest of the people have to follow it. It's like kingdoms. If you don't have a king, then managing that entire kingdom or that place would become chaotic. Isn't it? There will be no rules, no regulations, nothing. Who is doing what? Nobody knows. Right? So to make sure there is some order in place, we always have master-slave architecture designed. Right? Here also in Hadoop cluster, because we are talking about multiple nodes, we need to have one master who controls everything else. So what we say, we, we bring in another server, one node, and we call this as master. So rest of the nodes are basically your slave nodes, slave computers, have to follow the instructions given by the master. This way, there will be an order. Right? It's like we have an organization, we have a team, and we have manager and rest of the peers. Manager is responsible. Manager is the primary um, point of contact. He is responsible for the entire organization, or at least the team's performance. Right? So that's your master slave architecture, guys. Any distributed framework we talk about, it should have this master-slave architecture. So your master-slave architecture is broken down into these services, five demons, where you have single name node. Single name node basically means you will have one master. You will have one master. And you cannot have multiple masters, remember that. If you have two managers for a team, what happens? <laughs> what happens, guys, if you have two managers?
collision. <laughs> yeah. Egos will clash. <laughs> Isn't it? Cold war starts. Rather than focusing on working on the project, internal clashes will come up. Right? And uh, poor team members, they, they, they don't know what to do. Right? So hence, we always have one master. So that's the reason we say single. Now, master slave, doesn't it look very odd to have that slave terminology there? Right? It looks racist, isn't it? <laughs> so the terminology is also changed to make sure that it is gender neutral, race neutral, um, or designation neutral. It, it, it is very neutral. Name node is your master. So this server that we are talking about, that, or the service that we are talking about, the master service that we are talking about, is called as name node. So name node. And you'll always remember, have only one name node, single master. And rest of these nodes, we call it as data nodes. And you'll have multiple data nodes in a cluster. Remember, these are services we are talking about, not computers. But we dedicate these services to computers. And one computer, which always has a higher configuration, is chosen to run name node service in it. Because remember, without name node, there is no team, no project. Right? So it has to do a lot of work. We, we generally have an impression saying that managers do not work. But managers have a lot of work in managing that chaotic team, assigning the tasks to them, making sure those, those tasks are completed on time, giving updates to the clients, right? The stakeholders, they have a lot of pressure, remember. So we need a system which is high configured and we choose that as master, name node. Now these two basically are your HDFS components. And we also have something called as secondary name node. The secondary name node looks like, right? It seems like it is a backup of name node, right? Yes, it is backup of name node, but not the full name node. It, it basically, not, not the complete name node, it basically has only metadata as a backup. What does that metadata? We'll talk about it, right? And we also have these two services. Previously in Hadoop 1.x, these services were called as job tracker and task tracker. But latest versions after YAN was introduced, Hadoop 2.x, these were given new names, resource manager and node manager. And these are your map reduce components. Map reduce or YAN. Right? So this is HDFS, this is map reduce. <clears throat> Right, clear? These are, this is a high level information. Okay? We'll, we'll deep dive into this. So Hadoop has five services. We call them as demons. Single name node. Single name node. Data nodes. Single resource manager. And we also have node managers. And we also have secondary name node. These are the five services, guys. And this is the short form. This is how we write it. Now look at this HDFS architecture. This is how it looks like, or Hadoop architecture to be precise or to be more clean, but because we are talking about, we generally represent it using 
name node and data nodes hence it is hdfs architecture this is your hadoop and these are your computers one of the computer is running name node service and that is the service or that is the node or server which external client would be communicating with for example in a team there is an organization there is a team do you think uh, do, do you think the communication will be there between the client and the individual team members or do you think the communication will always be between the client and the single point of contact which is manager manager right the communication will always be between client and the manager not the entire team that's name node for us in hadoop cluster so client would be interacting with name node and name node looks into the request that is being made by the client and then he's this name node is instructing the data nodes to do the task right that's that's basically how the information is is basically managed or, or hadoop is managed right so this is about your hdfs architecture hadoop architecture it's uh, 9:47 pm in india ist we'll take a short break we'll come back we'll connect at 9:55 pm so yeah quick short break guys come back okay uh, is everyone back yes okay one of so let's proceed so we discussed about hadoop its services its features hadoop comes with three components the first one is hdfs the second one is map reduce and uh, originally hadoop came up with these three uh, two components only but later on yarn was also introduced so these are the three components this software that we are talking about is solving the primary two problems that big data has brought in storage and processing right hdfs is storage component and this component that we are talking about is working on distributed logic distributed framework framework is nothing but a platform like operating system so hdfs is a storage component and map reduce is the processing component on hadoop yarn is a cluster manager which basically helps to manage the entire cluster scheduling the tasks making sure it looks for the node failures replication is managed right and um, resource allocation is managed so entire thing basically is taken care by the cluster manager previously before yarn was introduced map reduce component used to do that task scheduling resource managing and all that so it was too much of an ask for one service so that service was split right and uh, yarn basically is was introduced which does the same job that map reduce is doing but now yarn also does scheduling and all that in a separate mm -hmm. service 
So this is basically how your MapReduce or YARN works. Now we discussed about HDFS component. HDFS component or Hadoop component for storage basically talks about partitioning. And what is each partition called as? Each partition is called as a block. And each partition or each block will have fixed or standard size. What is the default size? What is the default size, guys? 128 MB. I will be repeating this question 100 times if required, but make sure you buy heart and put it in your brains that block size is fixed and default is 128 MB. And then it also speaks about replication or we also call it as sharding. And by default, the replication factor, we call it as replication factor, is three. That means any given point of time, each block that you are trying to save on Hadoop cluster, right, is made of three copies, okay? The challenge, guys, remember we discussed this point already. When I replicate it, 128 MB block will become 2 into 120, sorry, 3 into 128 MB. So what is happening? The storage capacity that is there is increasing. But remember, availability of the data is more important than storage storage cost. Hence, this is the standard default application. If you feel that your data is critical and if your hardware is not stable, then you can also have 10 replicas. That's your choice, right? We can configure this replication. And when you're working with replications, standard replication factor will be configured. I mean, will be set when you're configuring the system, your Hadoop services. But we can also alter the replication. We can set the replication factor. We can increase or decrease the replication factors based on the node that we are using or based on the cluster that we are using. Right? That's your set replication concept. Then we talked about five demons. Right? Five, we call this as demons because in the background, these are continuously running. These are nothing but the background Java processes. Five background Java processes. Name node, data nodes, secondary name, let me write this, secondary name node, then resource manager and node manager. The configuration of HD uh, Hadoop that we talk about, right, is, is designed in such a way that it will have master slave architecture. So that there is a proper order maintained in the cluster. I'm just revising. This is your master and it will be single, single node. These three basically work for your storage side of things. Resource manager and node manager work with processing side of things. So here you will have one master. Resource manager is your master. Right? For HDFS, name node is the master. So this is uh, basically how we have the services. Next. We'll talk about name node. I mean, I'm talking now about the services that we are having. Remember Java is the source code for 
Hadoop. Okay. So if you are familiar with Java uh, programming, then uh, right, developing some kind of uh, codes and manipulating Hadoop will become easy. But see, I, I don't know Java, right? It's not mandatory, but having the knowledge of Java would definitely help. So this service that we are talking about is running in the background and this maintains or this name node service is used for managing the entire cluster and it is said to make sure it executes only the file system namespace operations. What does this namespace means? Namespace basically means this HDFS, virtual node, virtual computer. Internally, these are nothing but multiple individual computers. So we are creating a virtual space where the client would be interacting with all these interconnected systems. So any operation that happens at this virtual layer, this is called as namespace, space, right? Any operation that is happening here is taken care by name node only. And remember, it is the most important node in the entire cluster, most important machine. Whichever the system that we are talking about, let's say this is the system where name node is running, then this system becomes the most important system. Hence, out of all the systems, we choose the highest configuration system, good performing system as name node. It stores metadata. What is metadata, friends? What does metadata means? Anyone? Pretty common question. You might have heard this question many times, but what is metadata? Yeah, very good. Not main data. Data about data. That's the answer or that's the definition of metadata, right? Data about your data. So if I have to explain this, for people who don't understand data about data statement, let's say you have a book. Book has a lot of content in it, right? A lot of content. Now, if you want to refer to something, do you search the entire book? Do you go through the entire book to find out that one thing that you are looking for? No, right? Where do you refer to? Index, very good. So index is information about the content of that book, right? So index is also content in the book, but this index speaks about the content within the book. So data about data. Does it make sense, guys? Index is basically a information about the content that is available in the book, right? So on Hadoop cluster, we are going to store a lot of data, client data or whatever the data, operational data or whatever the data that we are trying to store, big data that we are working with is getting stored in your Hadoop cluster, right? Now information about the data to make sure that your system cluster itself understands the data that you're working with is nothing but your metadata. And in Hadoop, this metadata is basically explained using two files. Again, I'll talk about those two files, but FS image is one name and we have edit logs, the other name. These are the two files, which are your metadata files. FS image is nothing but file system image. So 
your name node right i mean your hadoop basically is managing blocks right so if i have to copy a file into cluster it has to first split these are blocks right and these blocks again have to be replicated now where is this block stored in that entire cluster and which file does this belong to all this mapping has to be maintained because when you are copying the file fine you are going to split and copy now you want to retrieve some information some data from this file then how to cluster should know how to backtrack to that file right these are individual blocks that get stored in different systems but which system contains which file block and where is the replication of that particular block all that information has to be maintained right that is nothing but this metadata because i have all this information maintained in metadata it helps in mapping of blocks when you map all these blocks only then you will get the full data right so mapping is done using this metadata it maintains replication information also replication factor which is equal to 3 is maintained it makes sure that at any given point of time three blocks are maintained what does that replication factor maintenance we'll talk about that probably tomorrow then very important a balancer act that we need to do let's say this is a team we have a manager and then we'll have team members just you imagine that this is a name node and these are slave nodes data nodes right now for every team we'll have resources team members but not each team member is identical there will be some differences right some will be having very good iq right some will have very good technical capabilities etc etc now when a task is given to the team when a task is given to the team there will be good performers bad performers whom do you think manager hates the most good performers or bad performers yeah bad are you sure <laughs> i would say good performers why because if there are 10 tasks right out of the 10 tasks six tasks will be assigned to the good performer because as soon as you give the task to him is completing it so what does manager do he assigns another task another task another task right so good performers end up doing a lot of work right isn't it the slow workers bad performers they stuck with one task itself they're not able to close it so how can you assign another task not possible right so if you look back and see the workload a good performer is always heavily loaded with the work same way in your hadoop cluster the node which is performing well a little higher configuration node is there then it would complete its task faster that node whatever the task the name node is assigning that node will complete it faster right so when new tasks are coming in name node keeps assigning the task to the work the nodes which are free right <clears throat> but what is happening the node becomes overloaded so in interim basically some right intervals of time generally admins they use this balancer script there will be a function called a script called balancer or a command called balancer which is executed at regular intervals from the name node side 
and this name node looks into the workload of all these nodes and then it balances the workload right so that's balancer task which is done by name node again you do you execute the command name node has to give that information on which node is working heavily which node is slow and not working on many tasks right so that information basically is extracted from metadata again but ultimately name node helps us to do the balance right so these are the tasks that your name node does name node do not directly deal with the client data managers do not work they only manage right same concept here name node does not work on the client data or client requirements it manages other nodes to make sure that the client requirements are completed right and data nodes actually work on your client data okay so that's your data nodes this is your data nodes Mm, then we also have replication and see. Okay, fine. We'll we'll stop here. We'll start data nodes tomorrow, and then we'll also have to discuss about balancing. We also talk about something called a safe mode. We we'll talk about secondary name node, replication factor maintenance. Right, all this we will cover tomorrow. Any questions? on the discussion that we had today so once this uh, components are discussed we will have to do hands on guys so i'll show you uh, installation as well so until then please hold on probably we have the two classes we will be theory hopefully then post that we will start hands on i'll instruct i'll give you instructions up front on what what uh, configurations are required what softwares are required to set up this right and all that and uh, yeah linux also something that we need to look at uh sayed i already mentioned i don't have java in fact i was um uh, lucky enough that in my academics i was lucky enough that i had a very good friend who was good with java i have zero knowledge in java guys i'm still working with hadoop so don't worry about uh, java if you're not familiar that's okay remember your primary focus is not to develop java code or not to develop a code in hadoop your primary objective is to process the data and to process the data we have different high level programming languages that we will be using uh yes uh, um sarada prasad that's right we will be using vmware that 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 uh, yeah we'll discuss if you have linux fine otherwise we'll have to use vmware okay uh, okay all right guys um, we'll conclude for the day and uh, we'll we'll continue the discussion uh, tomorrow yeah. i'll let you know tomorrow uh, nabil uh, you, you should be having the access but uh, not sure how it is that being done i'll i'll give you an update on that tomorrow uh ashner i i take care of that don't worry i i'm recording that ashner what configuration jobs na system i'll i'll explain that don't worry we need to have um, minimum 8 gb memory we need to have wi fi and at least 30 gb storage space that's that's good enough even 20 is good enough
But 8 GB memory is something that we need. If you have less than this, then you'll not be able to uh, smoothly run the system. I3 is also fine, but I would say I5. And 30 GB is good enough disk. This is the minimum configuration I'm saying. Anything above this is good. Now, we are not going to set up a um, cluster not required. We'll be creating a pseudo cluster. I'll also explain how to install cluster if your uh, system has the capability, then you can do that. But otherwise, yeah, we'll, we'll not look into this here. Yeah, yeah, perfectly all right, uh, Reach. No problem, yeah. Um, Ashner, if I have to explain the physical setup, then a uh, lot of network configuration is coming into the picture. You need to have a router, then you need to have a dedicated network created for that. Public IP has to be created, static IP has to be created. So a lot of network configuration comes up. If you are able to handle that, then I can explain the installation part of Hadoop. I can help you with the, the installation part. It's very easy. Network configuration is the difficult part. Yeah, if you have network, then no problem, Ashnar. Uh, I'll, I'll guide you. No problem. It's a simple configuration setup. Uh, one, one file is what you need. That's it. That one change will make sure that the Hadoop is running in a cluster. Rest everything will remain same. Because remember, for external user, for external user, it is a single computer. Within this, do you have one system or do you have multiple systems is immaterial. Right? So don't worry. Yeah, yeah, you can you can have three CentOS. That that should be good enough. Sure. Hold it on. Uh, I mean, just hold on. Uh, let's discuss the setup that gives you an idea on how to design it or how to work on it. Once we do that, probably then you can try and attempt setting up uh, the network and all that. Just hold on for another couple of days. That, that, that would be better. I, I recommend that. All right, friends. So. Yeah, good night. Thank you, everyone. We'll connect tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Good night.